Hey guys, in this section we're going to be actually creating or generating a new Ruby on Rails application or application framework. As I said in the previous tutorial, Ruby on Rails actually does all the, the, um, the it gives you the, the entire structure of folders. Um, so what we're going to do is we need to open the command line. I'm in Windows and if you saw the last tutorial, the installation um, the installation section you should have installed uh, Rails installer which it's what it's called for Windows so to get that as long as you already installed it and followed along you should go to your start menu I can't show you my start menu because I'm on a different screen for the video but you would click start menu and then optimize programs and then you should find a, a folder called Rails installer okay let me just check it out and see exactly so it would be a Rails installer and then right under that it says command prompt with Ruby and Rails. You want to click that and then that should get you to this screen right here. Alright, so we're in our C drive and we're in the site directory which is directory that it um, Ruby on Rails created when we did the installation. So if you go to my computer and then C drive, uh, go to sites and there's this sample app called to do in there. I'm just going to delete that. We don't need that. And then we want to go to our command line and we want to create a new app. So what we do for that is we just say Rails and then new and then the name of the app. We're going to be doing a project called My Ruby Blog. Uh, and what that is is it's just going to be a, a a blog application where we can add posts and categories and and stuff like that. So um, and we'll be we'll be dabbling in this throughout the the series, but chapter seven is where we'll be doing most of the the work on this this actual project. So do Rails new and then my Ruby blog, and it'll go through this process. And what it's doing is creating the entire structure for us. It's creating uh, the MVC framework, uh, the the public folders, the scripts, the test environment. It's it gives us a lot. It really does. And and this is why one of the best things about Ruby on Rails is that it, it does this for you. If you were gonna um, program a custom framework, you would have to do all this on your own. So it should be done. It says your bundle is complete. Use bundle show and then the gem name to see where the bundled gem is installed. So uh, we, we do have Ruby gems installed. It comes with the installer. Okay, so if we look over here in our sites directory, and you can use the command line as well. Uh, if, if we do ls, it'll list all, everything in our sites directory, which is just my Ruby blog. And you can change to that. And then we can list and we can see the structure of this actual application and we can see it in the GUI as well. So we have, I'll just run down these real quick. Um, the app folder is where we'll be doing most of our work. This is where the, the entire MVC framework is. is. Uh, you'll see we have views, models, controllers, uh, assets, and we have a helpers folder for just uh, smaller functions and, and methods that we could use in our in our structure alright so that's where we'll be creating a controller and a view and then a model and then config we have a couple files here um, the only one that we need to worry about right now well not, not even right now but coming up we're gonna have to uh, configure our database configuration because by default we use an SQL Lite 3 but for our application we want to use MySQL so this will just consist of editing this file and the DB folder is for all our database migrations we can actually create database tables and t table info on the fly um, through rails and the document folder libs will contain all our libraries and tasks log will be obviously is the law will be log files public this is where we'll be putting our CSS files our global CSS files and and um, 
images like images folder and stuff like that stuff that's available to the public scripts we put our scripts in there uh, rails the rails script is already in there whenever you do a command in the command in the in the terminal or the command line it has to start with rails in order to use rails <laughs> and test we get a entire uh, uh, unit testing all different kind of tests we'll go through that in later sections uh, we have our temporary folder and then vendors which we're not gonna worry about right now um, and that's that's pretty much it as far as the structure of the app uh, we'll be creating stuff in the app and also the public directory mostly so now what we need to do is we need to run the server so that we'll be able to um, access our app in the in the browser all right so what you need to do is you need to go into the directory that you just created with your app and all you need to do to run the server is type rails s or you can do server you can do it like this or you can just do rails s and this should start the server all right so it's it started it said we have to click we have to press uh, control C if we want to shut it down all right and the default location for us to, to visit this is um, is on our local host in, on port 3000 so what you want to do is get your browser and go to just cap locks you want to go to local host or HTTP localhost uh, Chrome automatically puts that in and then 3000 and you should get this uh, this welcome aboard page and this just lets you know that your your app is now running um, on the server and the server is running all right all right so we have our app and server running but we obviously don't want this as our home page for our application or for our website so what we're going to do is create a view that it can default to for the home page and you might not understand this fully but um, in the next section in the next chapter rather we're going to be doing um, Ruby programming for the, just the actual language so we'll have a break from the from the web app stuff and then in chapter 3 we'll be talking about the MVC framework so then you'll learn exactly what we're going to do right now um, if you already know about model view controller then that then you'll probably get what we're going to do here all right so basically we need to create a controller and we also need to contain we need to create a view for that controller and the controller is going to be called home all right because this is going to be our home page stuff and the view is just going to be called index so it's going to be index.html.erb which I'll explain um, so let's we need to go to the command line but if you are where I am now and you have your server running um, you can't actually use this instance of the command line so you have to open a new one so we're just gonna keep that running that's the server so go back to your start menu and then go to um, rails installer and then command prompt with Ruby and rails and you should get another command line and this will be the one we'll work in so Rails has an, has a, an awesome um, generation engine. It just generates our controllers and views um, just with one line of code. We don't have to create any files um, or anything like that. So you just want to go into your back into the my Ruby blog directory. So just CD and then my Ruby blog. And from here we want to generate a controller and a view so what we want to do is we want to do rails and we want to do generate controller and we're going to say home which is the controller and then index which will be the view all right so just type that and then just press enter and it does some magic and it creates those files and it even tells us what to do uh, to get it to, to be the home page. We gotta go in the routes config um, configuration file. So right now, let's go back to 
our site or our app in the file manager explorer whatever you want to call this um, and if we go into our app and then we go into controllers you'll, this is the home controller that we just created now as I said in the earlier sections um, it's it's convention over configuration so this this naming convention convention is very um, it's, it's mandatory your controllers must be the name of the controller then underscore and then controller and that's just the convention you need to use if you're using rails so we see that that our controller was created now if we go to views it created a home it created a folder called home for us with the index view inside so this index view is what we're gonna have for our home page the home controller the index view okay just try to keep that in mind and we can open our editor uh, for now I'm just gonna use notepad plus plus which is a great little program great little editor and this is all let me delete these other tutorial stuff alright so this is all that's in our index view remember home controller index view right here and this is what we'll see um, right now I want to show you how to get rid of this first of all so you want to go to back to the the main folder the Ru my Ruby blog and go to the public folder which is in this index HTML file this is what we're seeing here alright so we want to get rid of that and you can get rid of it you can delete it or you can just rename it I'm just gonna put a 2 on there because it's looking for a file called index.html and if we reload we have a routing error which we're going to fix right now because we the reason for this error is that we don't have a home page we want to make that view our home page so now what we want to do is go to config and go to routes and just open that with whatever editor you're using so we want to scroll down and go to to we want to go right here line 53 you'll see these um, hashtags these these are comments if anything has this this tag this character in front of it it's just taken as a comment it's not any there's no configuration going on or anything if it has that so we just wanna all we need to do here is delete out this comment okay and it gives us the root which is the home page and we define the controller and the view and by default they have welcome as the controller we, we called our our um, controller home so we're just gonna write home and then we want to use the index view which is this fault this file so just do that just uncomment it and then just save it alright so now we can get out of routes uh, out of the routes file and go back to your browser and reload so now you can see this is our this is the actual index file the home controller index index view okay so we can change anything here let's just say uh, this is the home page and save that I'm just gonna do control s to save and if we reload this is the home page so now we have an app set up and we have an actual home page so we can actually start building our app now